So Unico is releasing a handheld called the Unico Pocket. And I really just have one question. What are they doing? What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, the good people at Unico that brought us the exceptional Nova Blast, a product of exceptional quality that really is the only way you can go right now and buy something brand new that's going to give you that candy cab experience has now come out with a new product or they're coming out with a new product they're releasing a handheld it's called the unico pocket it's going to have a four inch four by three ips display that's really good um, it's going to have 40 games built in 40 snk games built in and then beyond that uh that is probably where the praise actually stops so you know, anybody that's been gaming for any length of time um, is aware that there are a flood of handheld devices. I have one right here. This is an Ambernick. This is, uh, what, what is it, the 5, okay, the 351P. This is the plastic version. They made a metal version of this. And this thing has probably been out for, what's the year on this? I don't know, I don't know, four years. And they've come out with about 897 after this. It's not just Ambernick. It's any number of different brands out there, all Chinese versions of the exact same thing the thing about these handheld devices is you know you're not getting official releases of course but you are getting like thousands of games built in with weird emulators some of them work some of them don't so there's a flood of these things out there all for you know about the same price that the Unico Pocket is being sold at being sold about $89 now that's $89 that's I'm sure that's going to be just your starting point you're going to have shipping and taxes and all that so this thing is going to be roughly a hundred bucks what is different about this than anything else that's out there well I, you know it's it's wad because the thing that makes some of these things really stand out is the way that they look so my first question about this once we got the specs so once we took a look at it and we saw that it was going to be available in both gray and light gray <laughs> like it was made for Batman. So my my first question really is, um, why doesn't it look like this? The thing that you just came out with, very red, very MVS uh, inspired. It's got the uh, while the the button layout is not the classic. You have the classic colors, and uh, you know no clicky stick, unfortunately. And I know clicky sticks are something that people thought we were going to get, but Unico has clarified that no, we're not going to get clicky sticks at all you're just going to get your standard analog sticks that are available on basically everything right now this is a 16 by 9 display about four inches maybe 3.75 inches or something so this is not an accurate representation of the size of the screen but the handheld is probably going to be a little bit bigger than this now the thing that really got me is i saw a video that they put out of someone actually playing this thing and it's just, I'm sorry, it just looks like every other thing out there. And while looks aren't everything, you know, I mean, Chrome doesn't necessarily get you home, but the way that these things look is very important when you're trying to stand out. And you got to start out with one thing. You got to admit the fact that you're actually going to have a deficit of only 40 games. Now, 40 games is a lot of games built in, sure, but compared to something like a million of these different devices out there that have thousands of games, right off your right off the bat you're starting with a bit of a deficit for sure only 40 games is not that much but if you're an snk fan you don't really care you love neo geo that's great but if you love neo geo you're a kind kind of a fan of the red the red and white motif that's what you really should have done so right off the bat this is something this is the big miss not even having the same layout the same imagine the same console but just available in red this neo geo red would have been the first thing that you could have done to make this a little bit better to make this stand out also what's up with the controls i mean they're just generic controls it looks like everything else out there nothing nothing else is different about this now i can't believe i'm saying this and i can't believe i'm going to do this but i'm going to compare this to the my arcade which makes these little 35 dollar purpose-built devices for playing very specific games this one is the one they made for contra it's got the uh, the vertical screen so it's you know, it's correct and uh it, it, the layout is you know very simplistic but it's absolutely 100 percent a contra device there's no if ands or buts about it um you know it's just it's, it just screams contra it's only got two games and the screen is pretty small what's the, what's the size on this everywhere you go kids you gotta have a tape measure showing you you're looking at like a three inch screen so this is very small but there's no mistaking that this is a contra device made for contra 
and it's going to play Contra. If you pick up this gray device, this Unico Pocket, which, I mean, as of right now, as of the gameplay footage that we saw and some of the pictures we've seen, there's no branding on it at all. Now, is that a legal ease thing? Is that a licensing thing uh, where they're not allowed to use, you know, the words, uh, the, the, the um, sorry, the MVS, um, you know, acronym? Uh, are we not seeing, I mean, I, I don't even see Unico on it, you know, let alone the words uh, Neo Geo or SNK or anything. So, okay, if that's if that's the issue, if that's the problem with, you know, making it look a certain way or having having the color scheme or having the branding on it, well, then does that mean that the games on it are not officially licensed? I mean, I'm assuming that they are, but then what is the point of just a gray device that plays only Neo Geo games? It's just... It, it to me that really misses the mark and there's another thing you need to consider they're not just for playing anymore they're also for displaying a lot of people will get these and collect these and just display them you know have them on your desk have them on a shelf i have a whole row of psps up there in different variations they're you know they're display pieces who is going to display just a gray console just a, just a gray thing with no Neo Geo branding whatsoever. Nothing really specific. Nothing that screams Neo Geo. At $89, it's also not very price competitive. If you go on Amazon right now and just you know type in Ambernick device, you're going to get all kinds of different P, um, um, handhelds out there that are in different configurations. Some of them look like Game Boys. Some of them look like the PSPs, you know, or the Switches, you know. And a lot of them have 3.9 and even 4-inch IPS displays. And they're all rocking about that $90 to $100 price point. So what's going to make this stand out? If you just walk by and see this sitting on a table somewhere, it's just going to look like every other device. Why didn't you do something like this? But you know who did do something like this? Ben Heck. Ben Heck is a guy that's been on YouTube for a while. He used to host the uh, Ben Heck Show. Now his uh, YouTube channel was really just him tinkering. And one of the things that he did do is he took one of these devices, uh, one of the original tabletop devices, and took it apart and actually made a little handheld using this screen and using some different components. And it looks very much like an SNK slash Neo Geo product. It even has the proper button layout, which just drives home the point that if some guy, which I know he's not just some guy, he is an engineer, but if a guy with a little bit of ingenuity and some drive and some love for the you know the product, yeah, uh, love for the Neo Geo brand and the name and all that can put together something that I think is far superior. Why can't Unico do that? Why can't they partner with someone and make something that stands out that's very unique? That's sort of the whole point of it. I mean, and if it's just going to be some device where you can sideload other games, what really is at the end of the day the point of this device? Now I've heard rumors that they are coming out with a different device that's going to be maybe the right color and maybe maybe look a little bit different. But that doesn't make sense to me to do that after a product like this. Bland, boring, it comes out. I mean, what if it doesn't sell well, which I'm not sure that it is going to sell very well. It doesn't really stand out. It's not very unique. Um, I mean, we, you know, we can we can wait and hopefully the, the, the retail box will have some kind of... Uh, Neo Geo vibe to it, I guess, but for right now, the handheld just looks very plain and ordinary. I don't see it standing out in any way, shape, or form. So it's just not going to be able to compete. And if you're going to put that best foot forward and come out with a product, and supposedly the rumor is there is this other product, that's this other handheld they're going to release later, why not lead with that if it looks more like an SNK product? Why not lead with that if it's got the red, if it's got the black, if it's got, you know, the branding on it, the proper branding? Why not lead with that? Or why not start with something like one of these little My Arcades? Maybe you take something like this and you get the four button layout, you know, and it's something, maybe it's smaller, maybe it doesn't have a four inch display, but it's got the branding and maybe, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you don't put all 40 games on it. Maybe come out with a whole line of SNK products like this, something similar to this, maybe a little bit better quality, and maybe you have one that is just for Metal Slug. Maybe you have one that's just for Samurai Showdown. Maybe you have another one that's just for, you know, uh, Art of Fighting. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, think about it, you know, and you could have maybe some devices that are really kind of cool, really kind of collectible, and, uh, you know, maybe you can start off with a lower price point, some limited features, 
but you'll have something that I think is going to be more sought after than just another generic gray handheld. It's kind of disappointing. If you're a fan of Neo Geo, like you know I am, and many of you out there are, uh, it's got to be a little bit disappointing to not have something that has something unique about it. A unique control scheme, uh, a unique red color, you know, uh, some, some decals, some branding, something that would make this stand out amongst your collection of other things. So they're missing the mark. So what are they doing? I don't really know. If you're going to test the waters with something plain Jane like this, I probably would have made it even smaller. And with a price point of 50 bucks or less, you can definitely see the point. But if you're north of 50, if you're right at $100, you know, people are going to start thinking, well, yeah, I mean, you know, at that price point, is it really worth getting something that's just kind of bland and boring and doesn't, you know, doesn't do anything different than every other device out there? A lower price point, you could have got away with something like this. But, you know, north of 50, if you're close to $100, I just don't see that this is going to be a success. I think it's really disappointing because I think that, like you, I would have wanted something just a little bit different. But anyway, that's just my two cents. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Everybody have a blessed day. I will see all of you right back here next time.